The Milwaukee Bucks are so back and I am so, so excited for this team to start this season. If you've been following my channel for a while now, a few months ago back, I made a video talking about I think the Milwaukee Bucks are in trouble. I talked about the future of the team and all the moves that they made at the offseason up to that point and what they did in the draft. Well, guess what, guys? In that video, I mentioned something about them trading for Damian Lillard. Now, I did not think that that trade was going to happen at all. I thought the Bucks didn't have enough assets for that. But guess what? The Bucks went ahead and pulled the trade off they traded for Damian Lillard which I lost my mind when I saw this trade happen so I thought it'd be a good idea to break down this Milwaukee Bucks team with adding Damian Lillard and trading away some of the pieces that they had to go ahead and win a championship so it's gonna be a nice video for you guys about the Milwaukee Bucks before we get into it drop a like and subscribe I would very much appreciate it and comment with you how far you guys think the Milwaukee Bucks can make it in this year's NBA playoffs and let's get into it first off I think it'd be a good idea to break down what the Bucks exactly traded for Mr. Damian Lillard and what they had to give up. So it was a three-team trade. Of course, the Bucks got Dame Dollar. The Blazers got Drew Holiday, DeAndre A, and Kamara. I'm going to try to say his last name the best I can. If I say last names wrong or names wrong in general, I apologize. 2029 Bucks first round pick in a pick swap. And the Suns got Nurkic, Nazir Little, Kendon Johnson, and Grayson Allen. Now, there's some stuff to break down right here. I just want to say, first off, John Horse, go get this man a trophy something for GM of the year because this deal blew my mind when I saw it, knowing that we gave up Drew Holiday, Grayson Allen, a pick swap, and a 2029 first round pick. That's all we gave up for Damian Lillard. And it honestly blew my mind because I did not think we would have enough assets for it. Yes, I know it was a three team trade that Portland. And also got DeAndre Ayton, but you know what? Let me be happy, okay? This is truly amazing. Now let's get into how I feel about trading Grayson Allen and Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday, listen, I love you, man. I love what you did for the city of Milwaukee. You brought us one of the best plays in Bucks history, maybe the best play ever in Bucks history in the finals, stealing that ball from Devin Booker, but you know what? I think it was time. I mean, there's just a lot of signs pointing that it was time for Holiday to go. I love Drew's defense. He has one of the best. I love Drew's defense, as you guys saw last year. His defense is truly insane, but his offense is very, very questionable at times, especially last year in the playoffs and the Miami series. His his offensive game is very questionable. And when you trade a guy like Drew Holiday, who is a great defender, but his offense is questionable for a guy called Damian Lillard, who averaged 30 points a game and is an amazing and one of the best shooters ever. And in my opinion, the second best shooter in the league right now, you got to make that trade. I love you, Drew. I loved everything you did in Milwaukee. But when you have a guy like a Damian Lillard on the line to get, you got to pull the trigger. And Grayson Allen is gone too, which I really am kind of happy that he's gone. I did not like Grayson Allen on our team whatsoever. I felt like his shooting was sometimes mid his defense was sometimes mid it's okay we got Malik Beasley at shooting guard now I rather have him than Grayson Allen and I feel like a lot of Bucks fans me included were just getting sick and tired of him like I was saying though thank you Drew Holiday thank you for everything you did for this organization you are truly a great player and you truly be remembered in Bucks history Grayson Allen we'll see a different day on a different team on the Phoenix Suns that's going to be interesting so now let's get into how I feel about this Bucks team what the team currently looks like their depth that they have and let's all around how I feel about them in the Eastern Conference and if I truly believe this team is a championship contender this year. So of course the Milwaukee Bucks have Giannis. People think he's either the best player in the NBA currently or he's the second best player. It's really a debate between him and Jokic, but I would not get mad over you if you said Giannis is the best player in the league. I really love what Giannis is doing. Of course, he's an MVP level player. He's one of the best in the league, one of the best first options in the league. And then of course, when you add a guy like Damian Lillard, he's potentially the second best option in the league. I mean, Dame and Giannis, I truly believe this is going to be a dangerous duo. Like I said, I truly think this duo is going to be immaculate. The pick and roll with Giannis and Dame is just going to be all around crazy this season. Like a guy like Dame who averaged 30 last year, if Giannis were to get hurt or be out for a few games, they got Dame. And the same thing pretty much if Dame were to get hurt, they still got Giannis. Things are going to be crazy this year in Milwaukee. We also have a guy like Chris Middleton, which we've seen in the playoffs. When this man is healthy, he can be a deadly shooter, and this man Middleton can do some dangerous things. My personal favorite player in the NBA, I feel like that is crazy to say, but I am a huge Chris Middleton fan, and if he's hopefully fully healthy next year, things could potentially be very scary with a big three like this. Also, Brooke Lopez, I know he's getting up there in age, but guess what? This guy was second last year in Defensive Player of the Year vote, so if he goes ahead and runs it back, plays the same way he played last year, this starting five for the Bucks can truly be greatness and the shooting guard position is really up to adrian griffin and who he wants to start honestly i think pat coddington wouldn't be a bad idea he's clearly been the best trusted bench player in the playoffs and he's honestly at times he just looks all around good i would not be mad if we played him at shooting guard whatsoever and some of those role players that the bucks have truly had me excited of course we got bobby
Bobby Portis, a contender for six man of the year last year. I really love Bobby's game. One of my favorite players on this Bucks team. Also got Jay Crowder. I know he had no minutes in that Miami series last year, but we'll get into that a little bit later. And of course, we also have Malik Beasley, who we picked up in free agency. That man is a sharpshooter coming off the bench. And we'll get into the backup point guard that we signed, who I am super, super excited about. The Cameron Payne signing had me jumping up and down. I really wanted this guy on our team to be our backup point guard because I truly, really like him. Last year, he averaged 10 points, two rebounds, four assists, and a 37% three-point shooting. Personally, I really love what Payne was doing in Phoenix, and when I saw free agency hit and he was a free agent, I really, really wanted him to be the backup point guard, and I'm truly very excited to see him in a Milwaukee Bucks jersey. So really looking at the Bucks lineup is going to be Damian Lillard, probably Pat Coddington, Chris Middleton at small forward, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Brooke Lopez, and honestly, I really, really like this starting five, and I truly think I'm going to enjoy what I see from these guys. Really excited, and the bench is probably going to be something like Beasley, Portis, they're going to throw a little bit of Crowder in there, and probably some Marjan's also going to be in there. So truly, I'm really excited to see this Bucks team, and I truly like this Bucks team starting lineup. Now let's get into the one of the big changes, of course, with this team with the coaching wise staff. I mean, Bud is out of there. I mean, I really didn't care for Bud's play style because there's just been clips of him coming out saying, oh, the play style is play random. It didn't look like there was a lot of planning. It looked like a lot of structure was not in there. And honestly, without Giannis, I truly do not know where Mike Budenholzer would currently be right now. And if he would even like, it would just would have been crazy if Giannis wasn't here in my opinion. But we have Adrian Griffin now. And honestly, I am very, very excited to see what he's going to bring to the team. I think he's actually going to be a decent coach this year. I'm really excited. I kind of like stuff that he's, I've heard from him and what he has the capabilities to do. I'm truly excited for it. I'm happy and I just hope he's an actual coach that's going to have some structure and not have an offense and a defense that is play random. Truly breaking down and looking at this Bucks team, I really, really like what I've seen. I mean, this is all around crazy in my opinion. I don't know how he really pulled off the trade for Damon. Honestly, I was really worried about the Bucks going into the offseason and at that point where I made that video saying the Bucks were in trouble. And honestly, I like the changes they made. Now, some people might go ahead in the comments and say, oh, I'm biased because I'm a Bucks fan. Oh, Dame's not going to do anything. Just you guys wait. I'm excited for this. Stuff is definitely going to be different this year in Milwaukee. I just got a good feeling with some of the moves that John Horse made, things are going to be good. Now, where do I rank the Bucks in the East? Now, here's a very, very hard question because in my opinion, they're top two in the East. Now, this is where it gets hard because there is one team that I feel like is going to really compete with us in the Eastern Conference Finals. If these two meet there, it's probably going to be one of the most stressful series ever for Bucks and Celtic fans. The Boston Celtics, I made a video of them a, a few months ago back saying that they're dangerous and they're just like an all around good looking team. Traded for Porzingis and just did some crazy stuff I did not expect Brad Stevens to do. And honestly, they traded for Drew Holiday as well. I mean, I did not expect Drew Holiday to end up in a Boston Celtic jersey at that point when I made that Bucks video. Did not expect that whatsoever. And honestly, it's crazy. And honestly, like I said, it's going to be a tough series if they go ahead and play each other and things are definitely going to be different. But as of right now, the top two teams in the East are Boston and Milwaukee. I don't know who I want to rank first. Part of me tells me I want to rank Milwaukee first, but man, I just don't want that bias to be there. Ugh. I might have Milwaukee a little bit over Boston right now, but definitely we're going to see how this gets into because this game seven series is going to be wild. But in my personal opinion, the East is either going to be Boston or Milwaukee, and it's going to be a huge series. But the Milwaukee Bucks are back and they're looking dangerous. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Tell me how you guys feel about the Dame trade and the Milwaukee Bucks, just all around everything. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe. I really would appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for hitting 1000 subscribers. I really appreciate every single one of you guys that are subscribed to my channel it really helps me out i'm very excited to make content for you guys like this so i will see you guys in the next video coming out soon